All right. Well, I started the intro off quite interesting because we had the wrong button I pressed. But that being said, this is another quick tip from Power BI Tips. Uh, this is Mike Carlo and James. We are here to give you another Hi. quick tip around Semantic Link Labs. We've been exploring this tool. We're, we're loving the notebook experience right now. This is awesome for us. We really enjoy this. So with that, let's just jump right in. Um, James, give us some context here as I get my screen share going. What are we doing today? Yeah, so what we're going to be doing today is is looking at how a uh, Fabric notebook can be used to basically gather and uh, sort through metadata in your Power BI tenant or your Fabric tenant uh, about your Fabric items. So you've got reports, you've got uh, semantic models, you've got dashboards, you've got environments, you've got uh, notebooks, you've got everything, right? So yep. you're going to want to, as a, as a Power BI Fabric tenant admin, or even mm -hmm. just anyone in the organization uh, who has the uh, desire to want to like look at a list of things and say, okay, can we find all of the reports that deal with marketing? And they probably have the word marketing in, in their name, something sure. like that. This is a yeah. way that you could easily find all those things across the whole tenant. And you and uh, so what we're going, we're just going to kind of go through a demo of that today here. Awesome. With that being said, let's just jump into our notebook here. I have a connected Python. Uh, notebook. So this is a Python notebook. This is a single cluster that's running. And I can know that because when I look down here in the bottom right hand corner, you'll notice here it says V uh, CPU to virtual cores. Mm -hmm. So that indicates to me that I'm on a single machine. And that's where we're looking directly for down here in the bottom right hand corner. That's where we're talking about that uh, that area down there. Okay. Yeah. And it's and anytime that you're running a Python notebook, uh, you can you can see the engine uh, the name up there at the top, like in the center top, where it says Python, rather than otherwise it would say it would say uh, PySpark if you were running a um, that type. So if you put it in Python, it's going to by by uh, by its nature, it's going to only be a single uh, instance. Correct. So that will get that being said, we always need to do our pip install here at the very beginning of our notebook. So I'll run this. This is going to install the Semantic Link Labs library for us or the package mm -hmm. so we can use its commands. Um, we're going to use a number of commands here across Semantic Link Labs. So in this one, we're going to go to SemPy Labs. That's that's the uh, installed library that we're using, uh, the, the package. And we're going to shorthand it by using as labs. We're going to also use the reports and we're going to shorthand that as as REP for report. And then we're going to use the admin API and we're going to shortcut senpylabs.admin as admin. So these are just mm -hmm. helpers to kind of make it easier for you to work with these various packages in there. So I'll run that yep. command control enter. It's just less typing, really. I agree. Yeah, I don't, yep. I'm lazy and don't want to type a bunch of things. <laughs> no, we're not lazy. We're efficient. <laughs> efficient, efficient. That's what I meant. <laughs> the, the, uh, the Patrick LeBlanc uh, motto, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. We're not lazy. Yeah. We're efficient. Right. Uh, jumping into here, we have some uh, information about this. So this is the API that's being used. So we're going to use some APIs here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to run this line here as well. This is called workspaces, and we're going to use the admin dot list workspaces. So what this will do is this will go get through my entire tenant as an admin. You will be able to get all the workspaces. Next, we will take that workspaces object, which you can see that we've saved the item here on line one or line two. Sorry, line four. We're going to go into that data frame and on the column named workspaces state. We're going to say, let's go filter all the items to where they are have recently been deleted. So sometimes you may want to look in your tenant, like what was recently deleted. Someone asks a question about that. Or you may want to, James, you give a great example before the call talking about this was, you may want to go save all your deleted workspaces to a lake house and then share that lake house to the rest of your organization. So this is an admin only API that we're hitting. Only admins of the capacity can use this or admins of your tenant can use this but you may need to share this information broadly across your organization. So right. you can write this data other places that can be generally shared. Then the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to add a filter condition. So that's another pattern that we find that are useful. You need to grab a particular column by name. So we're going to grab the column named name, and then we're going to do a string filtering. So we're going to filter every single string that we observe in that column and only result the column rows that have starting with the word ext uh, and you'll see why here in a second there's a lot of um, workspaces with egregious names on them and we're going to go find them okay mm -hmm. so the last three commands here are just going to display those three data frames that we build earlier control enter to run this right now 
And we use the word display here because we want this nice, pretty table view down below. So if we don't use the word display, if we just type out the name of the column, um, you'll get a different view of this. We just like the table experience yep. because you can uh, expand the columns. Uh, you have the ability of clicking, clicking on the ellipsis and sorting it by a alphabetical mm -hmm. up and down. Um, but what we can see here is we get all the different workspaces that are inside my tenant. And if I sort the state Z to A and hopefully go to the top here, you can see in this list, we have a couple states of workspaces that have recently been deleted. And you'll also notice here, there's a, there's a capacity ID. And on the left-hand side here, you'll see that there's an also an ID as well uh, that you can see here as well. Mm -hmm. and, and the ID in this case means just the workspace ID. So like when we called list workspaces, what we yep. get is a, is a data frame where, of course, because we asked it to list workspaces, it's going to say, okay, yeah, we're going to give you an ID column. Because you asked for workspaces, the ID means workspace ID. And the same thing would go if you were like list reports, the ID mm -hmm. column would be report ID. Yes. Um, I'm going to just quickly switch out my screen share because it looks like my uh, Zoom it is not working. So let me just adjust that one more time here and I will reshare one more time here and get that going. Okay, so we're back here again. That way I can actually draw in color on the screen as well. Uh, let me go full screen here as well. Let's go to function F11. Do that down here in this window, F11. There we go. Okay, full screen. All right, moving on down the road here. Okay, so we've done our three tables. We also have this list here. We can now see all of the filtered workspaces. So that filter command that we did second uh, was actually using this column called state. And we just said only filter where it is deleted. So these three rows are now being filtered in our second data frame. And we can see the result of that here. Awesome. We know which workspaces were recently deleted and we can see those in this list. Um, Power BI holds on, I believe, when you delete a workspace. I think it holds on to it for 15 or 30 days. Don't quote me on that number, but Power BI will hold on to a deleted workspace for a period of time and then physically remove it, and you can't get it back. So um, there will be a period of time that it lives. Uh, and you can also see this in the Power BI admin portal as well if you want to go find deleted workspaces. Yep. This is one of those things where I think a, a really smart admin would go and basically make a report, uh, a, a notebook like this, and have yep. it uh, take the results and have it dump that into a lake house, build a report that hits that that uh, table in the lake house, and then share that report out with maybe department managers throughout the organization and just say, uh, look, weekly, here's the, the workspaces that were deleted this week. If one of these belongs to you and you didn't mean for that to be deleted, let me know. We can recover it for you. Um, yeah. So that's the, that's More the kind proactive of like, approach than reactive. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Love it. So um, I do a lot of embedding applications. We build a lot of embedded applications. We do a lot of testing with this. So one of the things that we do in our embedded application is we have a lot of test environments. So in order to uh, build a lot of workspaces without stepping on the names of those workspaces, we build a lot of workspaces that have computer generated GUIDs attached to them. So all these EXT are externally generated workspaces in my tenant. So you can see here, I've been doing a copious amount of testing on these various workspaces. So for some reason, as an admin, again, you may want to look for things or in workspaces and filter them down to a particular name. You may be looking for like the word demo or test or, you know, things that you may want to clean up as an admin. Uh, so there's our key phrases in your workspace names you may want to go look for. So this is another yep. opportunity for you to do some additional filtering. Yep. Okay, I'm going to give you a real-world example. This, this tip is free, no extra cost for this tip. <laughs> <laughs> I was just recently working with um, uh, an issue, a bug that I thought was an issue, but find out, come to find out there's actually a bug inside PowerBI.com as well. So if you make a workspace that contains a slash, a forward slash in the name, believe it or not, that is actually messing up a bunch of things when you try to embed or uh, potentially use paginated reports in embedding. Mm -hmm. So what I found was uh, I had a problem. I had a bunch of workspaces with the workspace name slash dev slash test slash prod mm -hmm. just to kind of make things easier for me to work with. Well, what I found was by adding those backslashes, I actually broke a lot of things inside Power BI and I could not render my reports. So yep. I had to find a way of solving this problem. So here's a good example. Um, I'm doing, again, the same thing. We're going back to our workspaces data frame that we had earlier. We're going to go find the column uh, that contains the word name. That's the name column. And we're going to filter anywhere we see the slash inside that column. And then we will display the data. Mm -hmm. So we're going to run this one now. And you'll see here, I have a number of workspaces that I should go find and fix. Data flows, Gen yep. 2 test, 
I should go fix that name because if I have any kind of paginated reports in there that I'm going to go render, right. that will cause a problem. So again, when you identify issues or problems in your environment, you can easily filter these lists. And now I have a very clean uh, GUID of where that lives. Uh, and then you can also uh, use that later on to go get, you know, create links and shortcuts and all kinds of other fun things inside this table. Yep. And one thing to point out is that because Mike, you, you identified that this problem really is only uh, the case for when you're when you're doing uh, paginated reports. It doesn't actually have a negative impact on uh, Power BI Canvas reports or what we call you know, traditional Power BI reports. And so uh, what this would mean is it's like, okay, okay, maybe it's only a problem if there are paginated reports in that workspace. So we should probably try to find what reports there are in the workspaces that we've listed here. And if, if, it, if it doesn't even contain any paginated reports, then we probably don't need to worry about it, right? Yes. So let's we'll we'll hang on to that we'll, we'll hang on to that note there. <laughs> yes, that's a really yes. good point. Yeah. Let's try to do that. We're gonna, we're going to go through the notebook as is, and then maybe we'll explore a little bit here at the end to kind of do some ex exploration mm -hmm. around right. trying to find in those slashed workspaces are there any pagination reports there? So we can say is this a problem or is it not a problem? Mm -hmm. So let's keep going on. Um, we're now going to transition over to using a pandas data frame. Um, it is a trade off to, from using a Spark data frame. There are some pros and cons of this, but mm -hmm. for working in this demo, we're going to just use panda data frames for a bit here just to kind of make it a bit easier for us to work with the, the data frame. So I'm going to import pandas using this import command. This is going to be a uh, panda is already installed. We do not run need to run the pip install because mm -hmm. your by default, your Spark notebooks and your Python notebooks already have the pandas library installed in them. I'm just yep. now importing the package so I can use it. Okay, here we're going to go to our short list filtered here. And so what this is doing is it's going to take the filtered starts with workspaces, the ones we had earlier. So the start with filtering for uh, starts with the EXT. We had like a lot of workspaces. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this uh, function at the end here called head five. Head five means take the first five items in the list. So I'm not going to grab all items in the list. I'm just going to grab the first five of those items. And I'm going to make a brand new data frame that I'm going to make it just a shortened list. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to go through each workspace and find all the reports in every single workspace. And if you have a lot of workspaces, this could take a bit of time, which is not a problem, but we're on a stream right now and we want to go quick. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a quick run here. We're going to make a blank uh, pandas data frame called report list. And then we're going to run this function here, a for loop. So for loop will go for each item, for each row inside our short list filter. We're going to iterate row by row for each of those items. We're going to go through each workspace and list all the reports. So we're going to make a list of all the reports for that particular workspace based on the ID or the GUID of that workspace. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a pandas function. This is why we imported pandas earlier. We're going to do a concat or concatenate. So we're going to take the data we have, concatenate the more data, append it to the bottom, and just keep running. So basically, this is going to create a complete list of reports workspace by workspace. Yeah. So we'll run this command now. Yeah, the, the, basically the pd.concat is almost some, it's something equivalent to like when you were to do, to do a, like a plus equals where yep. you're you're doing a, 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 a con, it's yeah, it's a concatenation assignment at all in one thing where it's like we're going to make this thing equal to what it was before plus this new thing. Correct. So we can see here we have different workspaces. So these are three different workspaces. And in the five workspaces that I grabbed, only three of them actually have reports in them. We can see right here the type is of a type report. So we can see that here it is type report. And then we actually have um, the name of the service principal that created it. Uh, we have some other details, the workspace ID and capacity ID. And I think we also have the item. Yeah, this is the item name itself. This is not the workspace. This is actually the name of the report that's inside this workspace. So again, we've, we've done some additional complex filtering. We're now doing looping. We can go through multiple workspaces and find various things. There's a couple other commands we want to kind of pull back up to like the big high level here. Maybe we want to list all the items in Fabric. So there's actually another uh, admin feature as well here. We can do admin.listItems. And so this will then go to the admin API and list everything it can find throughout the entire tenant. So this is going to list... Uh, lake houses, notebooks, data pipelines, everything you can think of that's inside Fabric, it will list out an object list of all those items for me. Yep. Again, if you're looking for something specific, you could use the, the technique we used above earlier where we filter by type, by lake house or data mm -hmm. pipeline. Um, 
I wonder, James, if there's, let's see if we can sort by this one here as well. I was going to say, can, can you, because like, because that thing has a, you could just add a sort or you could, does, does it have a filter capability in the, in the column too? Great question. Um, it doesn't look like we have a filter option. Not in this option. case. Darn. No. Darn. <laughs> yeah, right? We're going to have to go build it in, in Python, but. Um, oh, we'll pull can... it into Data Wrangler. Or we could pull it right into Data Wrangler and go there. And then again, yeah. easy, a UI that helps you build a filter condition. So mm -hmm. I like that as well. So you can see here we've got environments, explorations, lake houses. Um, you know, here's our mirrored notebooks, regular, a lot of notebooks. You can see I do a lot of that work here as well. Jeez, tons of notebooks. Um, we also have reports. What I'm looking for is paginated reports, and I'm not sure if I'm going to see that here. So a paginated report might just be listed. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so here, a paginated report is listed as a report, which is interesting. So mm. they're not distinguishing between paginated and reports. Um, they're just regular reports. So interesting there as well. Yeah. But again, listing all the items in the in the tenant. I think you can. The, there's there's a way that I found to uh, to um, get the uh, to determine whether something was a paginated or or a canvas report, uh, and that mm -hmm. involves getting its URL because the URL contains the letters RDL. Mm. Uh, RDL in it. Yeah. 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 So like that's that's one way to do it. <laughs> I wonder if we have that. I don't think we have the URLs in this one at this point, but maybe we can yeah, you'd in a future to call. Make, you'd probably make another rest iterate guy through and get, that. Yep. and get it. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Well, that's then we're down to our last kind of two examples here. So we maybe want to list all Power reports. So again, the same thing we were talking about earlier, where we said admin list items and filtered by report. So again, here now we're doing the same call we just did earlier, but now we're using the function. So this is the actual function from uh, Semantic Link Labs. It's a little bit different. This is easier to filter because you can just send in the type that you want mm -hmm. and it automatically knows so this is another pattern a different pattern than we showed earlier above in the notebook which is now this is just a single report filter uh, and it's mm -hmm. the api is only going to call and return yeah. just the items that it reports yeah if you're passing the filter as a as a parameter to the function so that you don't even bother getting everything and then filtering what you have you just say just only give me the things that i'm looking for specifically and this is another example that James and I kind of noodled out here. Just this is kind of just a fun Python example as well. We were just testing out how to do for loops and how that works. But here's a very simple example. If you imagine here, we have a, you know, a table, right? So up very much higher in our notebook, we had a list of IDs, right? So if we wanted to print out every single ID in this table, calling off a specific column down here, you'd have, uh, let's actually, let's actually use the table we just made here. So let's just use um, item list reports so this is all our reports list and so here we're going to go we're going to use that data frame right here we're going to iterate over every row in that object mm -hmm. and then for each row we're going to print the row and then this is the column name so we have to go confirm that if the column name is correct above which is item space id here that's what we're going to use so we'll go down below here and we'll then name this uh, item space id now i think the i and the d are capitalized i believe that looks right yep, yep. okay yep. we'll try that we'll hit run on this and so what this should do now is it should now print on the screen again a simple example it will just do this for every single row so if you want to make a, a multiple api calls if you want to do some sort of looping thing this is like the super basic example of how you would do a for loop over top of a data frame yep okay well, that's about it. I think that's all the demo that we had. Um, we can hide this output, and that's it. That's our that's our demo yep. for today. Jumping in, listing items using Semantic Link Labs to go get items directly out of your workspace. We will call out specifically inside this notebook and what we're some of these calls here. If you are using the admin API, you do need admin level privileges. So any of the examples in this notebook, when you are using that, please, please, please note, you must be admin level to access that API. So just be aware of that when you're using this kind of call. Hope you found some value from this thing here. Uh, James, yep. thank you very much for helping me build out this Absolutely. notebook. Absolutely. And Absolutely. hopefully we'll be back next week with another Learn uh, Semantic Link Labs uh, tutorial for you. Yeah. And of course, we want to make sure we give a, a shout out to Michael Kowalski for making this amazing uh, library. It's uh, Semantic Link Labs is, is really uh, revolutionizing a lot of the things we can do with notebooks and fabric. 100% agree with that one. It is quickly becoming my go to tool for everything I do in fabric at this point. So mm -hmm. thank you all so much. We'll see you next time. We'll talk to you next time. See you guys.